Hello everyone. I am Dr. V. Mohan, Chairman of Dr. Mohan's Diabetes Specialty Center. And in this series, I am talking to you about the liver and its association with metabolic diseases like metabolic syndrome and with diabetes. In the first of this uh, series, we talked about the relationship between metabolic syndrome and chronic liver disease, particularly non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about liver and diabetes and how they have a vicious cycle relationship with each other. So does diabetes produce liver disease or does liver disease produce diabetes? The answer is both are correct. There is a bi-directional relationship. We know that they have common antecedents. By that, what do we mean? Because the risk factors are the same both for chronic non-alcoholic fatty liver disease as well as for diabetes. For example, obesity is one of the commonest risk factors. And if you have visceral obesity, that is something which can lead to both diabetes as well as to uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now, what happens is that when you have excess obesity, especially visceral obesity, your triglyceride levels go up very much. Now that gets deposited in the liver quite easily because the fat can easily accumulate within the liver. So in the pathogenesis of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, they talk about a two hit hypothesis or a two stage hypothesis. The first stage is just accumulation of the fat inside the liver. The triglycerides just go and settle down the hepatic triglycerides. So that's the first step. The second hit occurs when some kind of an inflammation occurs due to this getting inflamed, the hepatic cells can get inflamed. When that happens, then that leads to hepatitis. So from the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, it then goes to the stage of hepatosteatohepatitis or inflammation of the liver. Once that liver gets inflamed and you get steatohepatitis, you're setting in motion a cycle which can lead to then fibrosis, so cirrhosis of the liver, and even going on to hepatocellular carcinoma in the final stages. Now, how does diabetes fit into all this? Diabetes is associated with dyslipidemia. It's also associated with obesity. So the scene is now set for chronic liver disease to come in because of diabetes. At the biochemical level, what happens is that there is an imbalance between the glutathione and its oxidized products. So this leads to decrease in mitochondrial energy, which in turn leads to a dysfunction due to lipotoxicity, which leads to beta oxidation and fatty acids are released. The hepatocytes are now getting inflamed and then this sets the process going until the liver is damaged, hepatic injury, hepatic uh, necrosis, cell death, leading on to fibrosis and then to cirrhosis. So that is the background. There are others which say that it's not just a two-step hypothesis. There are probably a four-step hypothesis. So they bring in the uh, hepatic venular uh, obstruction. They bring in the gut microbiota and other factors to be involved in the uh, pathogenesis of uh, chronic liver disease and diabetes and the connection between the two. Now, the role of the liver is that the liver itself can lead to increased triglycerides and this increased triglycerides can then lead to deposition all over the body as uh, ectopic fat, which is one of the reasons why diabetic complications set in. We know that we have uncontrolled diabetes, you have both glucotoxicity and lipotoxicity. Of course, these are reversible in the early stages, but if you leave it, then once a pathway is well established, it goes from stage to stage, and then you will find that uh, many of these people progress on to develop chronic liver disease, fibrosis, cirrhosis, and even to hepatocellular carcinoma. We know that all these are reversible if, number one, you follow very good lifestyle modification. What does it mean? You cut down the carbohydrate because excess carbohydrates leads to chronic inflammation. Of course, excess fat is also not good. So you take the right amount of carbohydrate 
take complex carbohydrates which are better rather than high refined carbohydrates you take healthy fats like mono unsaturated fats and you take enough protein now if you are able to reduce weight even by 5 to 10 kilograms your diabetes will come down the fatty liver will come down and you'll start reversing all these processes which i told you can progress you can also reverse it in fact i have seen people who just by 10 to 15 kilos of weight reduction are able to completely reverse their liver and also get rid of their diabetes uh, at the same time so it is very very eminently reversible and you are getting rid of uh, two or three problems uh, without as they say uh, two three uh, you know mangoes uh, with one stone as they say now to summarize uh, lipotoxicity promotes inflammation and insulin resistance this can lead to both diabetes as well as to fatty liver insulin resistance is something which aggravates this lipotoxicity and this insulin resistance is usually due to obesity and increase in weight and uncontrolled diabetes which can produce uh, insulin resistance insulin resistance can produce diabetes and all these are eminently reversible by lifestyle changes a healthy diet losing weight by doing enough exercise controlling your diabetes well and today we also have medicines so my message to you is control diabetes and protect the liver protect the liver and control diabetes as both are eminently amenable to treatment thank you